Hi. Um, we're, we're coming up quickly when you have to leave. So I would like you to share um, one experience from the set that really, really indelibly touched you and why. Um, I, I think one of the scenes um, from set that I, that I think was probably the hardest but the most memorable, um, we were doing a fire, a bonfire scene, um, you know, and the fire was probably taller than all of us. And, you know, we're pretty tall. So, like, you know, we reached to, like, 6'4", six, 6', six, you know, so we're pretty tall guys, 6'2", six, 6'4". Six, so the bonfire is bigger than uh-huh. us. And, they, the, you know, the director's wanting us to stand right next to the fire so they can get a good shot and, you know, the glare is on our <laughs> face. And, and so, like, you know, they would say, okay, come close, come close. And they'd say, okay, and action. You know, and we'd have to do our whole acting thing and, but, you know, we're supposed to not look like we're dying by the heat, but, you know, we were literally dying, and, you know, our we had some nice warm body parts by the time they said cut. Um, so we just were making fun of each other, and I remember that very well. Um, so I, I think that the bonfire scene was probably one of the, the best. And, and, you know, we were there for a while. So, you know, and the whole scene with the bonfire and the stars in the sky and you're out in the canyon, um, you know, you kind of... Um, and connect, you know, while they're preparing for the next shoot. Um, so I, I think that would have been one of the best memorable times for me. Okay. How about you, Sai? Oh, he took the words right out of my mouth. That's that's exactly my favorite. I remember my Levi's, they kept saying, stoke the fire, stoke the fire, and my legs were burning. And we're sitting here trying to act cool because we're on camera, you know, and we're, like, trying to hold these, you know, to hold this pose and all this. And I mean, we were just dying. And as soon as they were, as soon as they yelled "cut," we were all, "Oh man!" And we'd step back from the fire and cool off, wave our, <laughs> fan ourselves off, and all that. So I would, I would definitely think that was that was a blast. That was a fun time. Was there a river nearby where you guys could jump into? There actually was, but there were bears in the area we were at, and I think we were all too afraid to walk away from the fire, and we didn't want to admit it. Yeah, we were. <laughs> it was the bears. It was the bears. Well, you know, that was probably very wise. <laughs> Kyle, how about you? Yeah, you know, I uh, on our second uh, little promo shoot, we we were, it was kind of just fun just to kind of get to know everybody a little bit better. And uh, even scouting for that, that second location um, and just kind of setting up shots and uh, doing some of the work behind the scenes, um, not necessarily in front of the camera, but just a lot of the behind the scenes stuff was a lot of fun for me. Um, I'm I'm a big believer in fun, and whenever anything's fun, I'm totally you know I'm I'm all in. Um, I got a you know ride around to the Ducati, and and that was probably my favorite uh, <laughs> my favorite part of that second shoot. Um, I, I love motorcycles and and safety first, so everybody wear your helmets out there, but. Uh, I, I didn't wear a helmet in my scene, but um, it was just short, you know, down the alley type scenes. But it was uh, that that second shoot was just all about fun and getting to know each other and having fun with each other. Um, I would say that it it was more building, more team building than uh, than anything, just because of all the fun we had. I think. How important is it, gentlemen? Do you think it is to have that good, um, solid? a friendship and relationship between you guys in order to make the the show effective. Um, Anyone I, jump in? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. My first thing is having that friendship um, offset um, helps a lot when we actually film, you know, because on, on the show we're supposed to be really, really, really tight. And so I think it helps to have that friendship um, offset. And if I can, I actually have to... I actually have to um, head out, so um, I, I hope that's okay, Candice. Yes, of course. Of okay, course, hi. Ma'am. Any last word you want to give? What was that? Any last words you want to give to the listeners? <laughs> where, um, where can they well, find out more about the five? Just, just thank you. Um, thank you for having us on the show. I'm excited. Um, so, you know, good luck with the show. Um, hope we can be on again. Um, and of course. Sai, keep, keep being Sai because that's why we love you. And, Kyle, we need more sushi. <laughs> Definitely. So, and, and Brian comes on air later. Is Brian coming on? 
Yes, he is. Um, as soon as you get off, Brian will probably call in. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so it was perfect. I head out. Um, yeah, and and we love Aaron. We love Aaron and everyone who's been a part of the project. And and it, and please share our fan page with them. Um, you're wonderful, wonderful fans and followers. We'd love to have them follow us as well. And um, I'll. Oh, I'll absolutely. Okay. Have fun on set. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Sai and Kyle. Uh, Let's talk. Let's go ahead and finish that. um, What I asked Kai. Do you? How critical do you think it is for you guys to to like each other and actually respect one another in order to make that show uh, effective as it needs to be? Boy, for me, I think it's a huge deal because. you, it's just going to make it a lot, like Kai said, it's going to make it a lot more natural um, on 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 the scene, you know, on, on set because, or on film, because if you actually care about the person you're with, that's going to come through when you're shooting. Um, if you don't, I think, you know, I, I've watched certain movies and you can almost see on certain movies, you know, these, these, these actors, I'll bet, you know, I mean, maybe it depends on how good actors they were, but you can tell on some of them, well, I bet, I bet they drove each other nuts. And so I think if you can get along off, off set, it's just going to be that much better. And I know for me, those are some long days doing that many takes and hanging out with the same people over and over. It is so important to enjoy the people you're with. So for me, it's been everything. I, I love it. I love being with these guys. How about you, yeah, Kyle? For me, I would say for me, it's you know, you hear about everybody, all these casts that have been together for, you know, seasons and seasons, and they all get to become good friends. And I think that um, the friendship that we already share uh, between us uh, in the five, we already have that um, that camaraderie, that friendship. And like I said, it's just easier. It, it translates through on the film so much easier. We don't have to work hard being actors if you already have that genuine friendship, and so it's it's more just an extension of yourself, um, getting you know coming across as w- with what your character is, and so you can focus more on who your character is and and what kind of traits that character might have, as opposed to the rela- relationships that you have. Um, it's just that one aspect that just makes it easier uh, to portray when you already have that that connection. Okay, well, that sounds about right. Now, we're coming up to a top-of-the-hour break in about five minutes. And so, Cy, can you hang on, or do you need to take off? No, I'm good. Oh, good. Okay, we have five minutes. I would like you guys, each of you, to tell the listeners why you think the five is going to be a hit. I know why I think it is, but I want to know why you think it is. So, Cy, let's start with you. Um, I think it's going to be a hit because it's something that people need, like we were talking about with your show, everything your show's about, uh, powering through obstacles. I mean, who in their life doesn't have an obstacle? And that's going to be exactly what the show's about is uh, good versus bad. And so if it inspires people to be better in their lives, then it's going to be a hit. People, I think people generally want to do good. I think people only do bad when they're kind of lost, kind of confused. Um, so I think it will definitely inspire people to follow their dreams and do good. And, uh, we need a lot more of that out there. I think, you know, uh, you guys were talking about earlier that there's just too much, um, killing. There's too much hate. There's too much drama on TV out there. I think everybody's ready for something new. I think, uh, I think it's time to have, uh, more inspirational movies out there. Yeah, without question. Now, don't don't get us wrong. There's action in this show. But I, one of the things I like is good is going to triumph over evil. And I think in, in uh, the day and time that we live in, that message is critical to provide the hope that America needs. If they can watch shows such as The Five, they can um, – they, they don't understand how much the, the – uh, message from the show will will take take root in their hearts and and help them to feel that hope. Kyle, how about you? You we know, have, it's we have three and a half minutes. <laughs> so so you want me to be long winded here? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, 
I'll, well, I'll let I, you know. I, I'll, I'll interrupt <laughs> if you go too long, okay? Okay. I, I would just say, um, you know, it's every kid's dream to be a superhero and to have an ability that makes you more than human or makes you, you know, takes you beyond what normal traits are uh, in a human being. It's, it's just fun. And, I mean, it's not only the, the lessons that we will teach uh, to people, you know, each, each week when we, you know, put on the show, but it's the walk away from it. Um, I think that, that everybody's going to get is, you know, that, that good will ultimately triumph over evil. Evil is always looking to, you know, take take on, you know, the weaknesses of, of humanity and exploit them and uh, take advantage of those who are less fortunate or, or who are weaker. And people with these powers have, you know, the the need to, to, to extend their service to these less fortunate or these, these weaker people uh, because they have been blessed with, with such a great gift. And you see that throughout, you know, all the superhero movies that are coming out uh, these days, you know, especially like Captain America, somebody who who consistently, you know, was, you know, somebody who was against anti, you know, uh, against bullies or somebody who would take advantage of less fortunate. Um, and that's, it's just really exciting to be able to step into a role where you you get to become that, where you get to become the protector of uh, of those less, you know, that, that don't have what you have. Um, you, who you can protect those weaknesses, you can protect those vulnerabilities in other people. Um, it's, I, I think it's a, it's it's a really fun premise uh, whenever anybody gets any type of power, and so it's. Uh, I mean, like you were saying, you, you kind of let your mind wander when you think about these different powers that you can have and uh, and the, the different things that you can do. And that's that's what I find myself thinking every day is, you know, if you know if I were to have these powers in real life, you know, well, what are some of the things that I would do uh, for good? And it's, it's just kind of fun to think about. It really is. I... Uh... I have often thought I, I've always wanted to be a superhero. I, I don't really know anybody who hasn't, and right. I always thought about what would I want to do. And I think I would go with Kai's power, Jason's, which is telekinesis, the ability to move things. Yeah, but, with your mind, that's the fun. When one. we get back on the other side of the break, gentlemen, I know for a fact that the writer Aaron Glines gave you guys limitations. I still don't agree with that, but we've got to talk about those limitations and why they were necessary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that that you have to have some limitations. You can't be, you know, wield all power. But uh, I, I think that I think that as we, as we go on um, through the different seasons, I, I know that just seeing the glint in Erin's eye when she she starts talking about uh, the different characters and the different things that they'll experience, I know that the I mean, obviously, abilities will grow um, as the the challenges that face them grow. Yeah, it, it it it's amazing. You know, I I've known Erin like I said for a long, long time, and I know what she's been through in her life. And she has been a woman that has exhibited such grace and strength uh, through all those trials. So I I can see why she wrote this series, why the premise appealed so much to her, and and I think I really think, guys, that what we're going to end up doing. Uh, with your show, and and I'm promoting it like mad because I love, love the premise, and now that I've met you, I think you guys are awesome. Um, I think it needs to be out there. I think that television is the biggest influence in life right now. It shouldn't be, but it is. And so I, I think it's wonderful that a series such as The Five is going to be on air, and they're going to come on in January. There will be a mid-season replacement. Um, to be there for people to watch. Now, we are going to the top of the hour break, and I, I want everyone, if you can, go on to Facebook, go to the 5 Series, type that in and search, the 5 Series, and 5 is spelled out, and that is their fan page. Like it. You're going to love it. Check out the info. You'll get to read the entire premise. It's amazing, and you'll get to communicate with these guys because they're on there often. So, Let's go ahead, uh, B, let's go ahead and take us to break. It's 10.01, and we will be back on the other side with Brian Hinn, Cy Garrick, and Kyle Fotheringham. 
Okay, maybe we're not going to break. B must be talking to someone. So I'll talk When people to think of a combat zone, they think of death and destruction of human life and property. Instead, they should think of the word compassion, for it is everywhere, especially in the hearts and minds of the American warriors. The soul of American warriors really tells what is going on in the war in Iraq, and it's not what you've been led to believe. I was amazed at how many times the word compassion came to my mind. Betty Kilbride, an American writer embedded with the Marines in Iraq, touches the heart of patriotic America with her story, and the story of the valiant warriors bringing stability to a dictator-torn nation. Soul of American Warriors, available at fatherspress.com. That's www.fatherspress.com. Soul of American Warriors, fatherspress.com. One conservative shot of Dr. Jim. If you have a free country, you'll wind up with a democracy. But if you have a democracy, you will not necessarily wind up with freedom. And you'll count the days to your next appointment. The current administration doesn't see it that way. They say that some of these things might come across as offensive to the rest of the world. You know, I say, so what? Every Wednesday on The Conservative Connection with Dr. Jim Robbins. But, uh, you know, let them be offended. We're the shining city on the hill, so let them deal with it. Welcome back to All Fired Up. This is Turning the Tide with Candace Salina. My name is Beatrice. I'm the producer. I'm the gal you don't hear in the background. Um, however, uh, Candace, the gal you hear in the foreground, is here. I'm going to turn it over to her. Thank you, B. Okay, we are back with Cy Garrick and Kyle Fotheringham of the TV series The Five. Now, do not confuse that with Fox News because these guys are demigods. Um, so, Kyle and Sai, uh, which one of you would like to um, jump on and uh, talk about, uh, real quick, some of what the show is about? Sai? Kyle? Yes? Yeah. Anybody there? I'm here. <laughs> okay. Who, who, who is this? This is Kyle. Okay, Kyle, go ahead. Why don't you give us a quick summation of what the TV series The Five is about that you guys are the main actors on. The Five is about uh, five kids who are in a fraternity together who basically have been brought together um, different walks of life, different places uh, in their life, uh, basically to to come together uh, to form a brotherhood um, of uh, of men that fight evil um, evil that exists in the world because of their progenitors, because of where they came from, because um, basically uh, the Greek heroes of old um, they had descendants, and they, you know, five of these heroes they uh, they were cursed by Hera um, as they they basically felt that the gods were becoming too too powerful and inconsiderate of humans and basically just drunk with their own power. So they uh, tricked the gods into becoming mortal and, and uh, basically deprived them of their powers. And in doing so, Hera cursed them to basically serve humanity for, you know, th them and their bloodlines to, to serve humanity for all time and to, you know, never get a moment's rest, to always be... Um, under constant fire, so basically cursed them to be uh, to, to use their strength, all their strength in fighting evil. And so you have this huge tide of evil that comes against these these boys, and it's just their them having to deal with their own personal issues, becoming their own people, and then also coming together to fight these evils together to benefit humanity. Oh, wow, I love the sound of that. Now, we have joining us, and that was a great summation, by the way, Kyle, it was way better than when I gave the top of the show. <laughs> um, we have joining Hello? Hello? Brian, are uh -oh. you there? 
I I think you're cutting in and out, Brian. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm in a hotel room right now. I've been running around trying to call in, but my phone keeps dropping. So. Uh -oh. oh, we can hear you good now. <laughs> okay. I'm just okay, going to hold my phone Brian. right here and not move. <laughs> Yeah, stand upside down and get it just in the right angle, and then we'll be able to hear you. Okay. I'm just do a handstand um, one in the hallway. Okay. All right. Uh, Kyle just got done giving a really good summation of your television show, The Five. Now, I've already spoken to Kai, Kyle, and Sai, and um, why don't you tell us who your character is and what your power is? Uh, my character is Jin Kwai, and uh, his power is basically levitation. Um, he can jump far distances, and he can kind of control his landing. So before he hits the ground, he can kind of slow down um, before he hits. And uh, I think most of us have seen The Matrix. I kind of liken it to, uh, remember when they're training in The Matrix and they're jumping from building to building? Kind of a power like that where they can leap Ooh. across, but... Not necessarily flying type, but uh, but he can jump really far and kind of control how he lands and um, sort of levit levitation. I was listening in earlier and I uh, heard Kyle mention that uh, we have limitations and that's kind of his limitation is that he can't completely fly, but uh, he can he can really jump. So, which is great because really I jump. I love heights. Yeah, love there you go. Now, Brian? Mm-hmm. Oh, did we lose him? Oh, you're there. Okay. All right. No. Really quickly, uh, we, ha we have Cy back on. So but earlier, and I would like your thought on this as well, I, I asked the other guys what, um, what they thought uh, could help people to, to uh, recognize that spark of heroism that exists in all of us and how they can, you know, fan it so it becomes a flame. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, their question again, just the thought of heroism or? Oh, yes. Uh, so it's in all of us. Most people never, never let it go. It's just sort of the spark. It has to talk to people themselves. Sorry, you're cutting in and out again. Okay, this is not good. Candace, 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 you're I'm only hearing syllables of you. Can you hear me? I think we're losing Candace. I think we're yeah. losing Candace. Okay, I'm going to let her know that she needs to call back in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> we dropped Candace. Candace, come back. <laughs> Does any of you have um, have the power to make voiceovers? <laughs> I, I can't sound like Candace. I, I'm good at voiceovers, but I can't do Candace. That's, that's one ability oh. that I haven't been able to uh, <laughs> dominate yet. We're going to have to make sure that you take care of that before before you're back on. <laughs> we'll have to, yeah, everybody work on your Candace voice. There you go. Oh, I'm here, you guys. I'm back. <laughs> there she is. There we go. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. For a second. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, sometimes we, we had technical difficulties. I don't know what was going on, but I think we have them all worked out. Brian, can you uh -huh. hear us now, and are we all good? I've got you loud and clear right now. Okay, good. All right, did you already answer the heroism question while I was trying to figure out why my phone was being weird or? No, I was trying to figure out what you're asking, <laughs> but you're coming okay, in and I, out. No. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, basically tell us uh, how people can recognize the heroism that exists within them and how they can make it stronger. Um, you know, with that, it. I'm a firm believer that everybody has that spark in them. Um, I'm a big fan of Anthony Robbins and uh, Awakening the, Gi the Giant Within. And uh, everybody has that potential. They just really have to dig deep inside themselves to find it. Um, emotionally, maybe, I don't know if the other guys talked about setting goals. Um, that always helps. If you set, 
if you set big goals for yourself, you're able to, you know, you have a goal to work towards. And if you're emotionally driven, attached to that goal, that will help you ignite that fire even more. Um, I know before all before the five and everything else that's happened, um, just in my life personally, um, I was in a point where I was very unhealthy and, you know, just one day I, I woke up and decided, and I truly decided because people always think they make decisions every day, but they really don't. It's kind of their, <clears throat> excuse me, their subconscious kind of taking over and they just make decisions without really knowing that they are. But when you truly wake up and decide that you're going to do something, and one day I woke up and decided today's the day, I'm going to start getting healthy again. I'm never turning back. Um, it was weird because emotionally there was something that happened inside of me. And once you light that fire and awaken that um, and set a goal towards that, you just go. And, uh, and that's, I think that's the heroism that we're trying to look for inside of people is inspiring everybody to become better than they, um, than they know they are, or, or at least let them be aware that they know that they have that in them and then finding a way to get that to ignite inside of them so that they can be become more than who they are now. So I hope that makes sense. That's it makes a lot of sense. Of sense. Absolutely. But, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Go ahead, Brian. But yeah, I mean, that's, I think that is the key. I mean, everybody's got it inside of them. Um, a lot of people maybe just aren't aware that they have that, but they just need to know. And that's why stories like the five, um, are great because it, that, and that's why people love it too, is because, you know, everybody wants to kind of be that hero and to be able to help people and do all those things, but not a lot of people have that confidence or have, or, or just feel that, you know, they can do anything because, oh, it's just little old me, but, but it's not true. I mean, if you look at examples over time, you look at Mother Teresa, you look at Gandhi, you look at all these heroes in the past, Martin Luther King, I mean, they're all just one person, but they inspired millions and did amazing things. So, I mean, everybody's got that in them. They just got to, it's a, it's, I think a lot of it's confidence, just being able to do it, put yourself out there and just do it and not worry about what anybody tells you unless, you know, they're a really close family. But for the speculators, you know, don't even listen to them. Just do do what you know or what you feel is right. So. That's yeah, that is beautiful, Brian. <laughs> each of you, each of you today have given such great advice to the listeners about how they can find the heroism inside of them. Now, I know that the writer, Erin Gwines, and she's also the creator of the show, gave each of your characters limitations. So why don't we uh, start with Sai. And Sai, you tell us what the limitation to your power with electricity is and why, why uh, the writer decided you had to have that limitation. Um, my limitation is I can only ethically use uh, enough electricity to where uh, basically I won't overextend myself and kill myself. Um, or hurt anybody else. And I don't know exactly why Aaron put that in, um, but I've done a lot of thinking about, you know, me and, me and you, Candace, we talked a little bit about, we were both, you know, kind of bummed about not being able to just tear it up out there, you know, and kick everybody's yes, butt and shoot, light, <laughs> shoot lightning bolts out of my hand. But, you know, I think this makes it a little more real to life. Um, I think maybe the, um, the viewers can... Uh, kind of connect with it a little more if we do have limitations because everybody does have limitations. And, you know, we're, we are all great, but you, you've got to know what your limitations are. And if you do certain things, you know, you can overextend yourself. So I do like the fact that, I mean, when, it, when a show comes on and these guys are just whooping on everybody, you know, you can only get so creative and think, you know, these guys are so bad, there's nobody that's ever going to be able to take them out. But the suspense of, hey, you know, this guy, he could die at any time. Uh, I kind of I think it makes it a little more real life for me. And so I like it. I like it. I actually like the idea. Too. Yeah, a okay. Little... Uh, I'm still not on board with it, Ty, but you make a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of lightning bolts coming out of the hand. Anyway, okay, Kyle, how about you? What's the limitation to your power with time? And and why did Aaron put that in there? Do you think? I think that uh, 
once you make somebody a, a time if you make somebody a time traveler, or, you know, being able to ma manipulate time is a very powerful gift. And my my limitation is basically that I can I can only slow down or stop time. Um, it obviously it takes a physical exertion to do so. Um, so whatever I'm slowing down or stopping, uh, say for example a bullet, say so, say if somebody shot me with a bullet, um, I couldn't I couldn't stop that bullet completely because there's so much force, there's so much exertion behind that bullet. It would I mean it, the physical exertion that it takes to stop or uh, that bullet would be too much for me. So I can slow things down uh and and only within my range of view. So only in my immediate immediate surroundings. So it's more like I can put things into a stasis field instead of it's not like I'm stopping all time everywhere. I'm just stopping little pockets of time within my immediate um area. And I don't know. I I feel that my power is the least limited just because it's um it's I mean but once again that the potential for for time manipulation is huge. Um, but I'm glad that I have the limitation because it's, uh, I, I like, I like having the limitation on me because, um, it, it forces me to use more of myself and not just my ability. Um, so I, I don't become my ability, but I, I just use it to help myself and others. I don't know if that makes sense, but. It actually does. What it does is, is uh, if I understood you correctly, force you to build your your human nature and human abilities to match exactly. your godly. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. It just okay. it just aids it just aids me. It doesn't it doesn't become me. 